normally have the features up, but usually when I don't have double feature nights, we've got the YouTube, or I've uh, got the uh, open mics up as well, which everybody gets to be on, which is awesome. But I'm just so thrilled that there are people out there that are actually wanting to download that stuff. And are you recording this stuff? That's I am not recording that stuff. You, you are now? I am now. I was going to say to set up for the other camera, and then I can do my whole official, and I'm wearing my scar sheet even forward. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hi, thank you for coming and welcome to the gallery. actually a cool day but it's actually gotten warm and I'm like I'm just sweating like that but I got two layers on because I'm a crazy lady but I had to wear my scarf shirt because I don't have a shirt for CC and D magazine I think they're gonna have a hockey the hockey game going really quietly in the background um, but I thought I don't have a CC and D shirt because this is actually uh, new issues of CC and D and down in the dirt magazines and I just think it's just a cute picture of down in the dirt I'm showing off that one first home at last with the great which is finally after we've had like the worst freaking winter ever it's nice to see for the world and there's a lot of cool stuff in this one but I always seem to like it all because it was my first magazine I get all hyped for it this is a 21 year anniversary issue of CCND um, V249 called Invisible Ink and yes on the cover we actually have somebody looking at a driver's license for CCND magazine it's got pictures of past issues and it lists that CCND was born in June of 93. <laughs> so, I'm like, I have to have it up for a cover, why not? So there's a lot of cool stuff, and I know that there are some people who are quasi-regulars to things. I released four bonus anniversary issues, because right now in 2014, all the magazines are also released, not only with their usual handy-dandy ISSN number barcode, they also get a nice BN number and are sold through Amazon.com and the like. So I released four poetry collection books. Um, the most recent one is called Sea Drift, and it's stuff from 2012 with bonus stuff from 2013 and bonus 2014 writings, which I believe I've got a Janine Ravis in here, and, and I've got, actually, I've got like Bob Lawrence, I've got Jared Pendergast, I've got Janine Ravis and Tom Roby in these things, um, as well as other posts. It's not just the people that I know that are the extra bonus ones. Um, honest for true. Um, but there are three other ones, and I wanted to actually start the night by reading. All of the bonus poems I asked for were poems that were supposed to be about the name of the magazine, children, churches, and daddies. So if you could incorporate all that stuff in any way, shape, or form or something, I loved it. So I was going to pull one from each of these books, and I was going to start with A New Era because this has a lot of stuff from the 1990s, 93 through 97 issues, and as I said, bonus 2014 writing. So I was gonna start of the first of three. This is one in there called Questioning Religion, Father and Son. I, I knew a child, a, a child who grew to a very smart young man. He studied engineering at university. The boy likes studying mathematics, seeing how it related to the universe. But he declined that field of study because it would force him to question his religious beliefs. I knew this boy's father, a man whose heart stopped four times after the hospital. After he recovered, he asked me if I saw a white light when I was near death. I told him no. He said, neither did I. <laughs> Questioning religion, father and son. I know that C, C, and D. Um, the, as I said, well, you're gonna have to manage to cover all of that stuff in issues like that. This one, I feel, this is Idols, <laughs> and it is based on 2003 through 2009 C, C, and D writings. The reason why there are multiple issues is because C, C, and D, when it first came out, was like saddle stitch, 20 pages. So I'm fitting a lot of stuff in as I'm going on. Issues are getting bigger and longer, so I didn't have as many issues from it. But this poem, which I've got to have some of my German 
into this one. Uh, this one is called <sighs> Father is Machin and the Fuhrer. Father, little girl, the Fuhrer. It was Saturday morning. My Machin didn't have to go to school. It, it was late this musty day in October, only one day after my little daughter's birthday. She was angry because I wouldn't let her celebrate last night with her school friends. She didn't hear the noises I heard on the streets in our Berlin town. She didn't understand why her father would stop her from celebrating. I, I know my family loved the wealth that we've had since my little girl's birth, but I had a sinking feeling things were about to turn. I took the train to the office Friday night because of the chaos outside. My Matschen didn't understand why I went out and she had to stay in. But being outside, I watched brick bombs break windows, setting stores ablaze before synagogues were engulfed in flames. I know she didn't understand, so I took my wife and daughter on a trip that early Saturday morning, and we slowly stared at the smoldering synagogues that, and the shattered storefronts that were scattered on the streets of Berlin. But I pray that the predatory destruction we saw that day does not mean we should fear for our own lives or our own religion. I know my daughter's birthday makes her a Scorpio, and I know the scorpion is a predator. I just hope my beautiful little girl, like the beauty of Scorpio, knows that her fierce independence and passionate resourcefulness must save her from our fear that we've unwittingly pledged our allegiance to for this unwarranted destruction is a frightful sign of things to come. Mm -hmm. It's hard to appropriately applaud for Crystal Knocked and <laughs> the year before World War II, I know, I know. But um, this one, which is the last one I was going to read from, there are four, but this is Friction, Friction, which is based on the 2010 issue, the 17 year anniversary issue of CC and D magazine. But it also has, because as I said, issues get bigger and, and it got to be where I'd put 40 pages, but they'd be at 10 point and expand the margins as wide as you can to fit stuff in. So I was able to put a lot of stuff in there, plus a lot of 2014 writings as well. So I was going to close off the readings from this of, huh, and I've got right. It's just seeing things about poems that were in it. This is called Kids Wielding Freedom and Sin. Whenever the kids go away to school, they're suddenly on their own, and every sin is suddenly now within their grasp. If their parents aren't there to scold them, the kids can still see the ranting preacher at the street corner denouncing every adult's idea they now have. The preacher says the number one sin is lust, but the kids don't know if it's lust or pride or greed, though on their own they love a gluttony and sloth, <laughs> though they don't see that envy or wrath might have anything to do with their adult urges now. It doesn't matter to the kids if that preacher they call Mad Max on the quad wielding his Bible and screaming maniacally at anyone who might catch a scrap of his screaming voice. It doesn't matter if he ever preached in a church. It doesn't matter if the kids are religious freaks or atheists. Because even from afar, the parents can be pleased that their religion can somehow worm its way in even when they're no longer around to indoctrinate their little ones themselves. They smile at the idea of the crazed preacher. They think, keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you. There are a lot of good pieces, and I'm thinking that if Janine comes, I'm going to ask her to read the three that I haven't seen her read. I'm going to tell you that the last one that's around, because that one was from 2010, this is Sea Drift, and it is from 2012. It also has some writings from the 
2013 anniversary issue plus 2014 stuff. And it's just so cool to see these books actually done. They have to keep showing them off. So I think I'm going to have to call my first person. I always love calling him up because he can be more radical and crazy than me. Please give it up for Joffrey Stewart. <laughs> I'll read three, two of them mine. Uh, this, this first one from Doug Rawlings from War Crimes Times. He uses the language corporate America, I think, the corporate abstraction covers for the Zionist banksters who really move it. The title, On War Memorials. Corporate America, be forewarned. We are your karma. We are your Orion. Rising in the night sky, we are the scorpion in your jackboot. Corporate America, be forewarned. We will not buy your bloody parrot. We will not buy your bloody parities any, anymore. We refuse your worthless praise. We reject your war memorials. Corporate America, be forewarned. You will not We will not feed you your, our bodies, our minds, our children anymore. Corporate America be forewarned. If we have our way, and we will, the next war memorial will rise from your ashes. The Rawlings. Title, Before Going Out to Leaflet on Memorial Day Weekend. The epigraph is from Sherman Skolnick, who was reported murdered by Mossad eight years ago last month. Report from anonymous source. New York City firemen, there were bombs in the building. Cyberspaceorbit.com. Crucial info evidence. Explosives toppled WTC. <laughs> the corrupting state finds the electorate in the world's largest democracy to elect one third of parliament indicted for criminality. Diogenes with a lantern illumines the crooks a registered voter might find in the mirror, which can name the paper that reflects the accepted lie about 9-11. The dissembled work of Mossad on Manhattan, as in Mumbai 2708 at the Pentagon, as in Mumbai 2708, 
which delivers Modi, Islamic Islamophobic PJP, to finagle democracy. Somewhat worse now than in slavery days of sovereignty, enabled by Gandhi and Gandhi and Gandhi, as many Gandhis as wars with Pakistan. Initially non-violently as tactic, deviated from principle into principality to empower nationality aligned with Zion for the nuclear infamy. Stand with Diogenes. Down with democracy. And this one, what I started writing this one, and then I heard that Maya had died, so I put her in part one, and uh, <laughs> that sort of lead up to what I began with. The title is Getting the News from a Scrap of Old Tribune <laughs> Used to Wrap Some Veggie Burger, <laughs> part one. Picking up from the bathroom floor a wintertime scrap of the world's greatest newspaper, inspiration arises for part two as Maya Angelou goes down in her last spring. Celebrated for cuspy celebration of the Jefferson who by draft dodging, bombed Iraq twice, invaded Somalia, bombed Serbia, slaughtered Africans adjacent to embassies, put 50 Israeli cops into the Haiti, worsened initially by his accession to power, ramped up poisoning and homicide in the Colombia, from which he helped move crack to the ghettos in his Iran Contra days as governor of Arkansas. Which brings us, leaving the tarnished legacy of Maya Angelou, to Defense Minister for Fascism under Jesus' name, part two. This is not about a new house or merely, or merely lines you, it merely lines you up to see a bespectacled Casanova, Reuters Photo 2002, fighting deportation on the grounds that U.S. government, Zionist organized government, whereby dual citizenship Israelis own and operate the Pentagon, helped him do human rights violations for which they want to send him back to El Salvador, to uncertain fate. To El Salvador, who has three ways of saying, don't pay taxes use John for the truth of no to armies and was fired on when Lehman was secretary to Navy. Under his high command and the blessings of that great racist communicator, tens of thousands were killed but he is only judged in civil court, no criminal court, like Hanrahan killing Fred Hampton, nailed for a few, some of them precious Americans, not some dirt, like the housekeeper sent back to El Salvador 
because she could testify that O.J. Simpson did not do it. Why mess up a struggling frame up for Seuss? Nothing in Lolita Clozell's Zellish article indicates that the income man Casanova was a grad of the school of assassins. But neither was Genghis Khan. Uncle Sham is shameless, wanting to deport its own Legion of Merit awardee, darling of the Pentagon, back to the scene of the crime. And the shame potential is worse or more, or however you say it, if Eugenio Vides Casanova beats deportation on appeal. Appeal, regardless of outcome, a force of accountability, a victory, more than not, for impunity, and impunity especially for the genocidal Israeli. All right. You're going to stay up here, my darling. You're going to stay up here because I forgot to tell everybody that for CC and D, I'm giving away kisses because everybody deserves them. And I'm going to give them to everybody else. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not even going to do it forever. I'm just going to go passing it around when I get back. And I'm like, well, you're here. I'm going to give you. You're getting your kisses. And you're getting kisses. And you're getting kisses. No, so good for you. But I'm like, I wish I bring that because, because on days like this, sometimes us ladies appreciate just a little bit of chocolate. So <laughs> if anybody wants some chocolate, this is for you. And uh, I should also do my little work. And by the way, it was awesome to hear the boss. I think people just saw me strutting around and see, like, there are bombs in the building. You get to get that quote again. I love hearing it. I do, I do, I do. One day, I keep saying it, I'm going to make it a dance track or something. There were bombs in the building. There were bombs. But I have to find the right. It just doesn't work to go through, but it seems like a great idea. But I keep saying it just because I'm a goof. Um, but since I have to say this, because I do all this video recording stuff, I have to warn everybody. Da, da, da. You think that you are free from the NSA, but not when you're here because I'm recording you. And guess what? This is going to go up eventually as a YouTube clip. And because we've got a phenomenal feature and I do podcasts every single week, we've got phenomenal Eric Ashton for our feature tonight. It will be our podcast this week. But then the next weekend, our open mic will be the podcast as well. So people will be taking copies of you everywhere and dissecting you and everything. And now, I think I have to call up a certain tongue. Tom, I don't even have Tom Schneider. Is that right? No, Schaefer. Schaefer. See, I don't have the paper around. Give it up for Tom! Give it Thank you. And he's got a beer stand, which is awesome. Yeah. Kept the boundary beer. That's all right. Oh, well, but that's yours, and you get a kiss before I pass around your beer. I'm just getting kisses. Everybody wants more kisses in your pocket. Does this go up? Yeah. Oh, Hello, how's everyone doing? Hi. Uh, I read this one last, like two weeks ago, yeah, uh, but it's been revised since. Saturnum, Deum, Tempus, Laudamus, fuck time. I cannot fault the alarm clock in the morning, serves my purpose. I can, however, chuck it into my wall. Can't do that with Homo sapiens. The name implies wise, but we are children staying in dotted lines or stuck in ruts, worked into the trail. And this serves what purpose? To bow down worship, golden calf chronos? Was order made from chaos when we smelted the calendar into bullion? Gave it form, golden calf, set on marble altar of anxiety. Reality check, 
checked by reality. We're stuck inside a bronze, brazen bowl. Flame under belly, grafting skin to metal, heated red hot. Trumpet blares bright from its mouth, and a most melodious bellow, Phalaris, let us out of here. See a brazen bull's bronze blackened belly. See a golden calf kept. Very well. Some people really like shiny. Look at it both ways. See them as a child. Then refry your mind and find that the pages of the calendar are worthy of neither praise nor disdain, and the clock hands deserve not a single burnt offering. Just a glance, like walking past the bum, broken, begging change. Et c'est notre vie, garçon? C'est notre vie, monsieur. And all of us are too diverted by bread and by circus, trundling our way into the butt crack of the next day. <laughs> This uh, next one is, it's the, it's, the, it's the first part of a long poem I'm uh, working on, and it's uh, kind of political. Oh, what? It's political? It's just kidding. <laughs> no, please, I love it. Glory be. Glory be to America. Glory be to the populist politicians of Washington, District of Columbia, all optimates. All bus tweet senators controlling Capitol Hill, the new Tammany Hall. <laughs> glory be to the lobbyists and the kickbacks. Glory to old glory flapping on the phallic staff. Glory be to the school morning pledge indoctrinating children into believing that this political machine was for the people in order to form a more perfect union. Glory be to modern medicine, American in every way. Glory be to patented prescriptions and the two waiting rooms for a treatment never a cure. Cures can't cure the narrow profit margin. <laughs> Glory be to the transformation of human beings into dollar amounts. Insurance, a casino, mafia run. The doctors break knees because our HMO don't cover extortion. Glory be to treating, not healing, not curing. Glory be to the private sector. Glory be to GE, Standard Oil, U.S. Steel, Commonwealth Edison, Goldman Sachs, Citigroups, J.C. Morgan Chase. Glory be to the Fortune 500 and glory be to Forbes' Top 20. Glory be to the Rockefellers, Steve Schwartzman, the Koch brothers, and their tea party, teabagging the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> they all used to spend that weekend at Bernie Madoff's Hampton home. <laughs> glory be to 747 Park Avenue, NYC. Glory be to the billionaires bringing back child labor, albeit somewhere else, so why the fuck should we care? <laughs> Glory be to apathy! Glory be to the fountain sodas and fast food! Glory be to the brain rot cancer caused by diet sodas! Glory be to Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola! Glory be to high fructose corn syrup! Glory be to the factory farms and little anonymous plastic parcels wrapped purchased at the supermarket! Glory be to the hormones, antibiotics, animal cannibalism, and the carcass. Glory be to Monsanto. Glory be to DDT, pesticides, and preservatives. Glory be to Napalm, Agent Orange, the Bunker Buster, atom bombs. Glory be to Oppenheimer and Havoc as we let the leash slip out of our hands. Glory be to the dogs of war. Glory be to Vietnam, Korea, Bay of Pigs, operations just caused Desert Storm, Iraqi Freedom, and glory be to the CIA. Glory be to JSOC, Praetorian Guard of the New American Imperium. Glory be to the secrets, NSA spying, phone taps, and Giants Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> Glory be to the media, New York Times and Time Magazine. Tell us who to fear today. Fear them burkas. They're different. They won't show their faces. Therefore, 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 we must kill them. We cannot trust them. Them we have harmed, fucked, denigrated. Glory be to those wars. Overseas, the white man's burden. Glory be to the patriotic fanatic, and glory be to jingoism. Glory be to the end user at license agreement, Facebook, Twitter, Apple, prostituted privacy of the common human seeking connection with common human. Glory be to the fine print, and glory be to the sweatshop cell phones. Glory be to the church of the almighty dollar, its steeple scrapes the sky. Glory be to the oil spill, floating fish cadavers, and the rape of our mother, nature. Glory be to deregulation and our eventual deaths. Glory to the clear channel monopoly. Glory be to the trickle down and glory be to laissez-faire capitalism. Glory be to the free market. 
Glory be to the status quo. Glory be to the rape of our Bill of Rights and the rape of the inner city human rights. Glory be to the poor people, gunshot, wounded kids, playground, Southside Chicago, Easter weekend, 2014, gang related once again. Glory be to apathy and glory be to the police state Patriot Act. Glory be to the dollar sign, genuflect before its almighty presence, bow your head to its sacrifice, glory be to greed, the new Lamb of God. Yes, glory be to us, standing alone on subway platforms in this caffeinated, medicated world without end. Amen. I just leaned over to John here and I said, I'm an Ayn Randian and I like that piece, which is really confusing. <laughs> it was very good. And then I have to say that as an editor, if you have a, an electronic copy that you could send my way, I could give you an email address and it could appear in a future issue of CCD Magazine that, that would also be released not only with its handy dandy ISSN number barcode, but also an ISBN number that would be available for sale at Amazon.com throughout the United States and the UK and Europe. Which is so cool to be able to say that 2014 issues are, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a goof, but um, 108 page issues, big old swoop. Whopping huge. Um, if you would like to send that to me, I would I would accept you. <laughs> Sorry, it sounds like a goofball, but I have to do um, one thing that appeared in this issue, which I think John would get a kick out of because he was the one that told me about it. Um, this is a Twitter link poll, which I guess I can talk about the uh, upcoming feature in two weeks. Um, I get to be the feature in two weeks on June 18th, the one of the year that actually starts at 9 p.m. instead of ends at 9 p.m. So everybody can just stroll over here whenever you feel like it in case if you have a long day at work or whatever, you just show up and we're going to have a ruckus evening because there's this great woman show that's going on beforehand. I don't know what it's called, I can't remember because I don't think. It's a, it's a spoken? Misspoken. Oh, misspoken, yes. That, thank you very much. That was the name. Thank you. Um, um, and we are following that instead sort of preceding everything. And I would love it if you would come. And it should be a really cool, awesome time. But the thing is, it's a book release for me. I've just sent out for my proof copies of uh, two volume collection books. And uh, they are called Partial Nudity and Revealed. And the reason why is because the book cover actually is a scan of a collage of images from my mammogram. <laughs> but it's also revealing stuff that's within the pages. Um, because they're two large volumes, I thought I should probably release them as small volumes like this as well. So I broke them down to a bunch of little ones like Twitterati, a bunch of Twitter length poems, or a hundred haikus, or ones like that. This is a Twitter length poem. Um, which is almost like a found poem or whatever, um, based on something someone else told me. This is a piece called Explaining What Condoms Are For. This is from an 11-year-old boy to a 10-year-old boy in the men's bathroom. A source of education. <laughs> you put one of these on, so when you sleep with a girl, you don't have to touch her. Oh. <laughs> For a story, I wasn't in the men's bathroom to hear that one, but I thought that was absolutely hysterical. So now, not that you know he wants to touch me or not, but he's double plus, triple plus, so awesome. please go over Jerry Bender again. Yes, the boys' washroom is a classroom. <laughs> Who's going to teach you, the nuns? Ha ha ha. You might be relieved if you don't know me, you haven't been here before, you might think we're done with political stuff. <laughs> but think again. No way. The militant Mick is at the mic. <laughs> Lord fairly close to halfway to Christmas. So I'll read you something that's in this CCD that I wrote during the holidays. 
It's called North-South Reflections from the Kitchen Table, December 24th, 1988. In St. Joseph of the Flowers, this is part one, I'm sorry, part one. In St. Joseph of the Flowers, in a country called the Savior, a carpenter shares beans and rice with his family. His hands, remember, cutting the boards, a missing head under six feet, by not very wide, two feet by starved to death, or was it by infection? Five feet by raped and shot at one foot range. And San Jose de la California, a steady pair of hands, arms, legs, levels, hedges remembers the climb, the crawl, fleeing the country called the Savior. The heart, the ears, the nerves. Remember the shots, the carpet bombings, home village left behind. Part three, and DC, Estados Unidos, a small guitar on a CD slips through silent night, jingle bells. Drinks, crackers, shrimp, passed around the reception room. Is anyone carrying the trays from an evacuated village? A senator sips a Bloody Mary. Tomato juice squeezed from a harvest outside San Jose de la Michigan, or was it Missouri? Index finger at the top of the glass, the finger that pushed the button, yes, sending how many million this time in military and economic aid to the country called the Savior. How many, how silent can your night be Senator, taking another sip of your Maria Sangrianto. Do you remember the testimony? Maria Erosa found rape and shot at one foot range. Was there blood the color of Tabasco sauce when it dried? Does the vodka lighten the color, thin the consistency enough for you to forget? How silent is your night, Senator, on your plane ride home? Part four. How silent can the night be in a repopulated village in a country called the Savior in the hearts, heads, and nerves of those who have returned? Is there a cure for the memories of all that was lost before fleeing? Christmas morning, priests will chant the names of the murdered. Sorrowful, defiant presentes will fill the church. Back home, you will give us, you will recite, give us this day our daily bread. Will you think of those who harvest the grain for your bread, Senator? Part five. <laughs> During prayers after communion, Will you remember a Latin prayer from childhood? Ite miss I s. Will you be thinking, is it I who miss the way things were in the world, in the church? It is I who am out of range of the sounds of los nombres y presentes and other sounds of a country occupied by its own military. When the mass murder has ended, excuse me, I went to say I meant to say the mass has ended. <laughs> Go in peace. Part six. The senator spreads jelly on toast next to his Christmas omelet. Skims New York Times travel section. Sips coffee, picked by experienced hands. Their hourly wage not listed on the bag. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Senator. Oh. 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 Oh.
shows off the magazine you read. Oh, da, sure. Da, 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 all right, all right. Da, da. Yes, that is appearing in the... And uh, this, these lines are awesome. Was there blood of the color of, taba of Tabasco sauce when it dried? Did the vodka lighten the color? Of the consist then the that then the consistency enough for you to forget. I'm like, oh my god. Sorry, it's good writing, sir. I'm done. Well, thank you. Keep reading. Okay. <laughs> That got rejected by some people who have no taste, just like another thing you publish. Yeah. Anyway, okay, um, on a lighter note, this is Thoughts on Doma and Domes. This will also this will also appear in children's churches and daddies. Yep. Do Ma and Pa need an act of Congress to stay together? <laughs> will the act steer the children straight? Or will alien thoughts, temptations, leak through skulls like water through church domes, capital domes? Dom and Nate hold signs saying, one man, one woman. Trixie walks by, asks, who the man, who the woman? <laughs> Okay, uh, this is uh, one of several C, C, and D birthday poems. It is on a little bit lighter note. C, C, and D at 21. I am an adult literary magazine. Read me and serve me. Thank you. First, I'll drink to that before I get the arse off the stage. <laughs> so everyone's health. Hey. Well, Sancha. Sancha. I of the Republic. Uh, I thought you were going to say just a little bit more. Do something else. Someone's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The <laughs> moment's kind of long. <laughs> I understand. I understand. And you're just like, I'll just keep doing it. And that's hysterical that you did the thing for CCD Turing 21. <laughs> it's a haiku. I'm that's awesome. Trying to get classical. That was awesome. You pulled it out. That was great. Um, but, you know, I'm tired of being the only host up here that's all talking and about how awesome this place is or whatever, my magazine, blah, blah, blah. I think we should give it up for our host that actually will call out anybody who's double plus, triple plus awesome. Please give it up for the Bob Sturm himself, Bob Rashka! A fine American. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> I'll do the scene behind last, so okay. I'll come back for the oh, laptop no. or whatever. Okay. okay. While I was looking for something else, I stumbled across a painting by one John Graco called Hallucination. So this is my latest poem in response to his painting. Affixed to the weight of my conscience, a shadowy hand tries to write an empty message that I will not ever read. A tornado lifts me and fiercely deposits me into the same locale as a minute ago, or was it an hour or a year? The serpent is present. I didn't see him before. His skin blends evenly with my gray stone floor. A stethoscope ear pays me a quick, quiet visit as though it were on a quest for something solid, meaningful. And the serpent doesn't mind. He doesn't even care. He slides his burnt yellow tongue lazily in and out. Now I look and see I am cloned. I walk, taking my time past thousands and thousands of me, mostly lying down, trying to wake up, trying to go back to sleep, awaiting clarity, facing coming disasters. A few readings ago, I read uh, a poem by Bruce Isaacson out of the Outlaw Poetry Bible. This is the other poem that he has in there. It's from the 60s. It's called Lost My Job and wrote this poem. No longer will I swallow hard-boiled instructions. No longer smile at people I'd like to bite. Today, I am free. 
Today I am Mick Jagger's lips. Today I am Kerouac's touchdown in Lowell 39. Today I'm Jack Kennedy. Ich bin ein unemployed. <laughs> there will be time later for assassins. Today I am Lenin arriving at Finland Station, Napoleon back from Egypt. Today I am Neville Chamberlain's piece, Timothy Leary's PhD, Joplin's vocal cords. I am used up, but new. And yesterday was my last day of work. Now come the women who say no. Now come New York, Amsterdam, Leningrad, Rangoon. Now come books I'm too undisciplined to write, poems written on white bread and toilet paper. <laughs> now comes literature rubbing at my leg like a dog. Now comes Christmas with its childish lies, and I will believe all of them. I'll make up new ones. I'll buy Jesus a pink shirt and leather chaps and wear them to parties of the damned. I'm the vagrant with a purpose, the comrade in a Mercedes. The king is dead. Long live dead capitalism. Long live the bridge loan made of Rolades. Long live Hemingway's shotgun, Milken's salary. Long live the hand of, oh that must not be from the 60s. Long live the hand of God as it fingers its way to your rectum, pushing you to do what you must. You must tell the boss to treat you with respect. You must stand up for free speech. You must stand up in a crowd of an overpriced New York restaurant and shout, Oh, waste! Nuclear waste! Tell the emperor when the people have no clothes. Homeless and health farms, convenience stores and Medicare. Tummy tucks for pets, advertising Tiddy Hope hologram. I am the blister on the burn. I am the golden boy turning bronze. I am Kerouac's belly, Howard Hughes' germs. I am Van Gogh's knife looking back at you in the mirror. I wrote poems for a nation of TV stars. I became the floating eyeball that looks over your shoulder as if peering off the edge of the earth. I have stripped my love for poetry. I cracked bones like Jesus cracked bread. That's how poems visit me. Like the ghost of a lover done wrong, like a party for a world done wrong. Imagine Lincoln and Marx in the party masks of Nixon and Stalin. The popes collect gold. Now the Russians prefer Pepsi. I would rather take dictation from the planets, from the strangest bottom fish scrubbing the sea, from the worst illusion of the best psychotic, waving poetry like a flag in a wind that burns as it blows. that she published. It's not in either Down in the Dirt or Children's Churches and Daddies, but it's in another It was in a collection book, yes. Chaos Theory. Thank you, so. It was a contest winning poem that appeared in a collection book from CCD Magazine's Sky's Publications. It was in Chaos Theory. This is about. And it's called The Scene Behind, and it was inspired by a film I saw by Eve Heller called Behind the Soft Eclipse. Rose petal teardrops collide with rain-soaked ruminations in a delicate square dance. Dim glare from nearby trees and slight ripple of ponds help to spotlight it. A horse pauses to drink from a mud puddle. There are hundreds of mud puddles he can choose from. There was much rain, but not now. A stray dog eyes the horse from a distance. Everything seems to stand perfectly still, then rearranges itself. Forest recedes into background. Clouds part, revealing hazy evening sun. Blackbirds fly haphazardly in half circles. They know how to come down, but when to come down, they know not. Hmm. Well, this made it about six times smaller. Rain-soaked rain ruminations dance with rose petal teardrops. Ah, oh, thank you, sir. The ponds eye the mud puddles. The horse has wandered off. The dog ponders and reflects. The sun evades the closing clouds. Damp upon damp, overlapping, underlap thing, like a natural wake or an ominous overture. Shimmery surface haze, golden dewy, telltale wash, dry pool, ripple, descend, arise, amend again, again. Not wanting it to ever begin, but knowing I must turn for home, I stand perfectly still, then rearrange myself. Thank you. I also a boxer.
See, I'm eating a Hershey's Kiss right now because CCD is giving kisses away to all of you guys because you guys so deserve it. And if I like writing from you, you could be in the future of share CCD. And if you would like another Hershey's Kiss, you will have to give more money to our phenomenal feature this evening from Eric Epson. No. This is what I get for putting food in my mouth and then go asking for money. Um, but I really would like you to put like your life savings into this or whatever because this man is so incredibly worth it. And just because I saw some ladies coming up next doesn't mean that she's free from giving money to our great feature. So in the meantime, please give it up for her. today because I was trying to get my x-rays transferred from one hospital to the other and I'm okay. Anyway. The arts. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Prism 10 versus FISA 32. Behind the scenes electronic communications expose five suspicious empty seconds. <laughs> National Ra Rainbow Clandestine Headquarters process electronic surveillance requests. Sun Cryptography locate restriction number US number 984 X-ray November. Base of operations circa 18 intentionally make 55 changes. 69 com computing instructions expose resident number 227. Monitoring agents transmit an intelligence data to signal investigations. Algorithm cipher collections analyze all encrypted leaks. Okay, if I sound I, I, I think this beer is making me feel a little like Amy Winehouse. <laughs> all of a show. All of a show. Okay. Okay, anyway. Okay, maybe this will be easier. Okay. The meanwhile aftermath. If deemed necessary, would you be shocked to learn? If deemed necessary, would you be surprised to learn. <laughs> this is, intelligence is not from a shadowy whistleblower. An identified deleted plan to engage in, in assassinations. An identified deleted had received intelligence. <laughs> this infiltration is as crazy as it sounds. Deleted mentioned that the document may have been from some other agency with jurisdiction. The FBI media office offered a typically elliptical response. Quote, we are unable to fill in the blanks, unquote. <laughs> but don't take my word for it. And all of these um, poems, um, if you look up Annabelle Echo, they all come with illustrations. Yeah, okay. you should, so no one can up. see them when you come up here, so that's cool. Yeah, they're kind of, I, I kind of printed these out at the last second today because I was sending all these faxes and scans to Midwest Orthopedics, and it was a whole, anyway, it'll be a poem someday, okay. Okay, Twitter alerts and eavesdropping bases, 12 Voices Pro tw test 12 archives at Channel 54 News Group. Gallagher Nasty Rootkits Stephen Fringe. Haptic Windows Shock and Probe while Ping May Lovey performs at Nexus 365 Nightclub. U Siphon 
randomly orbits his privilege number nine paymasters. Fluffy the obese cat, codenamed Capex, kills Commodore 64. Eight sarcastic friends of the four fingers salute the pervs. Disclaimer number 14 infected, infected the Jedi automated system. Please eagerly reply to proof number 14. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, you know what it is? Yahoo ch ch um, hit the attach button. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, I never use it. Oh, I tilt it a lot. Well, no, it's because I'm a giant girl. I can make it go tall and the gravity will help stay in place. You're awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, and look. Yay! Yeah! Hey, there's a red flag. Do it again. Yeah! I feel like singing something. Um, who did I say was on the list? I think there's a guy there named Ben that's going to be coming on up here, and I'm hoping he's going to raise really cool stuff because I love like my newbies and I love people to scream like freaking idiots for him. So please, well, you maybe you'll give me some props. Get up for Ben! Yeah! Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. So this is actually my first time uh, here with you all. Which is why we have to scream like idiots. I'll read you the first couple of things I ever wrote with only my thumbs. I wrote these all with my um, and, and I'm also going to read a, a couple from this awesome CC and D anniversary issue. Um, the first one's called Vision. She glides, a pale rider, a new Quixote toiling under the massive windmills of central Illinois. She rides forth in semi-lucid lunacy, bent on fixing some broken industry. Those Baroque reactors grind out their pulse in pain above her and her loyal beast. State cameras measure her progress, all the while recording the brown and green gray of our coming spring. It is my task once again to sit perfectly still in midair. We are all jacked in. The droning voice of Foundation, my only company. The clogged arteries of commerce attempt to impede my progress, and all the while these rusty wheels propel us Olymp on Olympic Avenue um, on its way past our loss, her loss, her loss. And, uh, so, so this one is called uh, Astral Path Dominion. I change when I walk in these woods. I'm an animal. I'm a dog. I'm a dire wolf. Where my trail leads, nobody follows. Back home in the garden, I'm growing like grass. At night, I'm the unseen bull lurking in the heather. My star is gone. I'm out wandering now. If I fall, I must fall alone. Moon woman, take me slow. Help me breathe. Faithless and faithless, this gray southern cross pulls me from the treadmill. Lay down in my dark clouds. I'm an eagle now. I'm a falcon, I'm a vulture now. I-N-R-I, -I. four capital letters printed in black. You don't need to know my name to see my star fall across the lake. We found a hidden road just between dawn and the dead of night. Find that piano, fill it with rain. Look back across our galaxy, and let's go buy some happiness. Uh, and here's uh, two, two uh, from C.C. Russell. Uh, the first one is Cave Paintings, Peck Merle. This is the ghost of a form, spotted, incomplete horses facing away, dots spilling out of their heads, withered forearm, legs, and hand prints. And the, uh, the second that I'll read is uh, French Kissing, also by C.C. Russell. We're trying these organic strings, tying the knot behind our backs, and speaking in tongues, of course, whisper. 
Here our eyes dark, flies in peanut butter. Here our fingers intertwine, only to break. Sorry, I'm holding magazines and I should be hyper because that's what I do. Thank you very much. I had to give some props to the 1990s stuff and thank you very much for that. Um, but then I thought, wait, I've just been doing stuff about those past issues, including that one from the 90s, but I've said nothing from Sea Drift. And even though Bruce Matson isn't here today, I'm going to read a haiku of his that appeared in that anniversary issue. It's just called Haiku. Words in same boat. Traveling on river of ink remain strangers. And I'm almost tempted because it happens to be in this issue, but only if you want. No, because I've got no compunction. I'm not reading that one. That's my poem in this. Um, I've got the original poem, Children, Churches, and Daddies, which is what the magazine's named right now. So it's only on request, otherwise, I'm calling up. Nobody's calling for it, so oh my god. I get to have my awesome, awesome guy and I ever see him on Facebook and I'm so, I'm so stunned because I'm like, oh my god, I didn't even see him until I see his name on their freaking list because I'm an idiot. Please give it up for Dragonfly. Come on, everybody, go! <laughs> I'm sorry, you have to scream like idiots for him too, guy. saying now that I pretty much just lived to spread the cynicism now. It's pretty much my only uh, uh, How do I explain how I came to this? I explored a thought process beyond a bumper sticker that I saw which read life equals love because then I deduced that a heartbroken person is a dead person. <laughs> And then I deduce that anybody who falls in love after they've had their heart broken is a zombie. So this is a poem about zombie sex. <laughs> Two time-crossed lovers dancing in an open grave. Morning dew glowing slightly onto ash and dust they grave. Not concerned with what the morning do, the weeping ones enslaved on this freest earth, bereaving, hurt, obeying, misbehaved, spinning deep beneath distracted stars, each step a moment sketched, melting light into refracted bars which stretched to reach their depth, ghastly gasps through interacting arms that met and intersect, spiraling into the blackness, silhouettes and pirouette, remembering to be forgotten, lost in cosmic circumstance, skinless fingers interlocking, crossed and gothically entranced, blackened eyelids frozen, rotten, paused, now bodily they glance, holding close to heartbeat, stopping caught in timeless neck romance. Broken bodies drooping narrow, stroking past each other's passing, cloaked in wounds from Cupid's arrows, piercing pleasures never lasting. Spoken calm, producing marrow, touching ribs together, clasping, throats inflamed from putrid swallows, drenched by brittle tongues collapsing, coats of luminescent shadows cling to dripping flesh, reacting, hopeless days with doomed tomorrows. Flames eternally rehashing, stolen yesterdays, one groom and widow, blaze in satisfaction, both engulfed and tombed and hollow, simultaneously grasping, waltzing lovers, briefly sharing nights of fleeting immortality, casting off the rancid shells that house their sacrificed humanity, petrified in stale positions, birthing carnal abnormality. Breathing life through blackest magic, finding freedom in fatality. 
So, John's dad, old man, would always be like, I'm gonna go to a bar, one and done. One and done, I'm gonna have one and get out. That's so unfair, that I only had the one that was awesome! Oh my god, I'm so angry, that just get you out more! Oh yeah! I usually don't do this. Because usually people come to me and say, I want features. And guess what? 2014 has been filled for quite a while, and we have been taking doubles for features for 2014. But if you wanted to feature, I could envision you like joining up with uh, Esteban Colon in the end of August or something. If you wanted to, otherwise, fill it up and get a spot for yourself in 2015 because you're awesome. And I believe, I believe that's the end of my open micers. Going once. Going twice, awesome. Then I want you to keep our bartender super ultra freaking busy because shortly we're gonna have a 